Hey, what's going on, guys? So last night, I was on the King of Pressure Wash podcast, and um, my friend Jason had me on his show where we spoke about SEO and how to rank in the Google 3-pack. The thing that's different about this interview is that he asked a lot of interesting questions. So I revealed a lot of things that I don't usually reveal on my channel because I was just I just wasn't asked. So I thought it would be a good idea if I were to download his show and put it on my channel. It is an hour long, it's a little long, but there's a lot of nuggets of information. This is specifically for pressure wash, power wash industry. However, if you're in any of the home service, really anybody that's looking to get into the Google 3 pack. There's a lot of value in this one hour int interview. So I really hope that you enjoy it. And if there's anything that I could do, feel free. You see my text number. I could always answer any of your questions. And like I said, it is an hour long, but there's a lot of there's a lot of nuggets in this one. All right, thanks guys. Garmin here. We have good old technical difficulties. We love technical difficulties. And um, we have a special guest on tonight, and I've kind of let some of you know who I'm talking about. Some of you have been watching me, and I've kind of talked to him about you. And uh, he's not in his normal seat because he had to go with on his phone. So we're going to make it work so we can give you value. But, Brett, tell me just a little bit about who are you and where are you from? Wow, wow. Thanks a lot, Jason. So my name is Brett Maletta. I'm from MindSaw. Uh, um, I started a web development SEO company 25 years ago. I started walking door to door with a, with a laptop that was about seven inches thick. And uh, I started off in New York City and I walked door to door. I was a correction officer for 20 years. And this is when I first got on the job. And uh, on my days off, I would walk, go door to door. On the first day, I wouldn't come home until I sold the site for $300. And then the next day on my day off, my second day off, I would develop the website. Nice. So at the end of the month, I was making an extra $1,200. Nice. Yeah, so that's how I started. So, so that's who I am. So he, he talks a lot, a lot about Google My Business um, and right. kind of websites and stuff like that. So if you have any questions, you can ask them here and we'll kind of hit on it. But we're going to kind of hit on, you know, what we are. I already got some questions I'm going to hit on, but we're going to just kind of go from the beginning and, and start of what makes, how do we get our Google My Business up and running, right? How do what to, and then when we end, I want to hit on what makes a good SEO company versus a bad SEO company. That is a, that is such a good question because that's going to be my next video. <laughs> nice, nice. So when we are first starting a business, what are some things that we need to do to be able to get our Google My Business up and running and not get the big suspension right out of the get go? Okay, so that's your question. Yep. Okay, so here's the thing. Don't put in for a Google My Business. Do what John the Power Washer would do. He just He's just starting his business, what would he do? He'd probably go get a website and do a Facebook page. Then somebody may tell him about a Yelp, about Yelp and Angie's List, because they got one or two clients from there. And then he may uh, get an Instagram page, and maybe a Twitter and a TikTok. So what, that person is doing is they're actually building signals, social signals and, and, and citations throughout the web. So what is that going to do for Google? Google's now going to say, hey, wait, there's apparently a John's power washing in Wisconsin on 1010 Main Street because I'm getting all these signals from Angie's List and Yelp and yellow pages and uh, I see a website here and I see all the social stuff. I see a bunch of stuff put on. I see a YouTube page. Let's just create it for him because he doesn't know that you're supposed to put it put in for it. Now, this has changed a bunch within the last year, two years, because before you would just put put in for Google My Business and put in your verification code and you were good. <laughs> 
But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say you were good. It wasn't really that easy. But you know what? For most honest business owners, it was. But I work with a lot of people that are always trying to beat the system. So I'd say for the past five years, they've had some problems doing it. But honestly, if you were an honest business, you did you did the honest you did, I'm trying to get better seat. You did the honest thing where you built the website and and uh and 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 and, and uh then got the GMB. The, the biggest problem, I guess the biggest takeaway here is that what people tr what people do is they build the the GMB first. Mm -hmm. That's the worst thing that you could do is build the GMB first. Because what happens is Google goes out and goes, okay, John's power washing. Well, let's go out on the web and see, you know, does he have a Facebook page? Is there any signals out there? When, no, it's an automatic suspension. And let me just say a couple other things. If you used your phone number to do another business, if you used your IP, your Gmail account, you'll probably get an automatic suspension. Even and I'll give you another thing. Go ahead. If you, if you, if you're the type of person where you're like, hey, I'm going to do ten of these power washing sites. I'm going to go over to a place like Twillo or one of these places that sell like a hundred. Uh, uh, phone numbers for ten dollars. Google knows about those phone numbers, right? So make sure you have a clean phone number. Get it from AT and T or Verizon or T Mobile or something like. Get it. Get a clean phone number that's never been used before. That when they when you get the phone number, put it in Google and make sure it wasn't Tony's Pizza, right? That's actually uh, a good get, point of talking about making sure that wasn't another business that. Um, you were that you're trying to tell it that you're trying to show these signals of Google of hey this is a, a new number at this point, right, right, and you're trying to get it confirmed for a power wash and for 20 years it was a pizza place, right? Because the company that's selling you the phone number doesn't care. And another thing is if you're the type of person that keeps using that keeps trying to put in for Google My Businesses from your IP address. Google's going to shut it down. So every time you put in for a Google My Business from that IP address, it's just going to knock it down. And they've been really strict on this the last couple, since that last, yeah. uh, about six months now, they've been hammering hard on it. Real, real hard. And in fact, they're even, uh, in fact, they're even um, uh, uh, suspending real accounts. Right, right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So what so with with Google My Business and that, what is Google My or actually it's not even called Google My Business no more. That's oh Google Maps. Um so when we look it up, that's Google Maps. Does Google Maps and SEO run together? Say that question and I think I know what you're saying, but I want to answer it the right way. When you say does it run together? Are you asking that if you show up on the first page of organic, will you automatically show up in Google Maps? Correct. No, no the answer is no. And what are some signals that are like important for Google um, to show up in the maps? So the real, here, here's a couple of, of real important signals. First of all, 80% of showing up in Google is your website. So having the signals on your website. So, for example, um, I, uh, there's something called H tags, H1s, H2s, H3s. And your viewers may not know what that is. But what they do know is if you look on your website, there are some there are some there's some text in bold on, on, on your pages. Am I saying that like yes, basic? You're, you're correct. Right? right. So there's some bold text on your page and then you'll. Then there'll be a paragraph underneath that bold text. If I was on my computer, I could have pulled up a site to show you. But OK, so so um, there's some bold text underneath that. All that bold text should say two things. What you do and where you're from. It shouldn't say stuff like um, we've been in business for 25 years. Every single one of your H tags should be where you're from and what you do. And like, that's the first thing. 
Charles said it's kind of the header, the big bold words on your website. Charles right. Charles Charles is right. Yeah, yeah. That that was your H tag. So you need to take a look at your H tags and see what they say. I can almost guarantee that ninety percent of the viewers today, when they look at their website, they're gonna look at their big bold um, text on their website. And it's going to say something like serving the community, family owned, and stuff like that. It could say family owned, but you got to say it like you know, serving the Tampa Bay, uh, serving the Tampa Bay area for the past twenty five years, family owned, power washing, uh, uh, you know, company. So one of the big factors I know Google kind of went to a while, not too well. It's been a little bit is proximity, right? proximity right. where, where you're actually located where your google my business is located um and that is a huge factor so for instance i'm outside of cincinnati about 25 30 miles outside of cincinnati in northern kentucky and so right. i know a lot of pressure washers are usually the same way what are some things that we can do to either get our google my business into closer to where we want to be at or what are some things that we can do to overcome the proximity side of things another another great question so the, the 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 maybe not the easiest but the fastest way is to get a second location in the area that you want to rank meaning open another gmb and so this is a question someone asked is it still bad to ha have more than one gmb on all oh, this is a little different one um, but right. how far away are those GMBs need to be a, for, apart so that they don't get flagged? Well, think of it like this. So I once said on a podcast, they should be five, 10 miles away. And then somebody corrected me and said, there's a Starbucks on every corner. Right. Right. So I'm going to just say, I don't know. How's that? <laughs> that sounds good. All I know is I don't want, if I'm already ranking in a three mile radius, I don't want a GMB in that first three mile radius, right? So I, I, let's, let's back up a second. So you asked two questions. The first thing that everybody on this podcast should, should know right now is they have to have a program called uh, Local Falcon. Write that down, Local Falcon or, or Local Viking. And what that does is it's a grid program. And that grid program shows you where you're ranking in your town. So it'll show that you're ranking at your address, but as you start to spread out a little bit, as you drive to customers, you'll notice that you go from green to yellow to orange to red. Green's the best, red's the worst. Right. Right? So your first question was, your first question was, uh, how do you rank yeah. proximity? Right. So the first thing that I would do is the easy thing to do is if you could get a GMB, if you could get another GMB in the area that you want to rank, that's Golden City right there is to get another GMB. That's that's the fast way to do it. It's not the easiest because you may get suspended. Now, if you so, get a get a GMB, does it need to have its own landing page on your website or in a yeah. phone number? Think of Starbucks, think of Home Depot. So you could do it two ways. So, for example, your first your first website and your first GMB is called Jason's Power Washing of what's the name of your town of Cincinnati of Cincinnati. But you're trying to rank in what's the town Burlington. You could you could create another GMB and another website using a separate phone number called Jason's Power Washing of Burlington. But you have to use different content. You can't use the same content that's on your website and put it on the second second website. That's one way of doing it. The second way of doing it is just adding a locations page on your website. And then having the location, is that through its Google My Business or it has its own Google My Business then? And then it has its own Google. Every locations page, if you have locations, saying that like we have 1010 Main Street in Cincinnati and 1010 Maple Street in Burlington, you need your own locations page gotcha. for each gotcha. location. Now, yeah. this is a good question here of, I was, um, if you have two different businesses at the same address. Okay, a laundry mat and a pizzeria like that? 
Or if you're at your house and you have a Christmas light business and a pressure washing business at the same address. Okay. I always did what I did back in the day is I would do like apartment A and apartment B. So that way it's That's actually, what I was yeah. that way it's yeah. actually two different addresses at that point in Google. Uh, 1010 Main Street, uh, Suite A, 1010 Main Street, Suite B. Yes, yes, yes. But here's the thing with that. If I, if I wanted to complain to Google and get a couple of my friends, like seven of my friends together, and then they do a manual review and do a Google Earth and see that that's a house and there's no such thing as an A and B, you're going to be suspended. Right. So it's only a matter of time before your competition sees you swooping up all the, all the leads and somebody complains. It'll work, but it just may not work forever. Right. So what are some things to make our, so we talked about proximity. That's a big one. Let's go to the another one. That's probably a, a, a pretty good one. Well, but excuse me. There's, there, there was a part two of proximity. One I said was to get a, a GMB in that second area. This, and the second one is to get locate is to do location pages in Burlington, create a location page in Burlington. The next thing is you want signals coming from Burlington. Three things. You want people searching in Burlington, power washer, Cincinnati, scrolling down to the 10th place and clicking Jason's power washing. You want people uh, using driving directions. So for example, if you're going, well, you're a service area business, right? You're, 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 you're a business, right? Yeah. You want to use your Google Maps all the time going to clients' addresses. Even if you know how to get there. Because it's seeing that your business is actually driving in those areas. And then that person should give you a review. And do this we is want, just my, my do, theory. Do we want to get pictures while we're in that area and post yes. it on there? Yes. How many pictures do we need to post on Google My Business or Google? Well, you could post as many as you want, but I would say anywhere between five and ten. I would say is sufficient. I mean, if it's a really big job or if it's a mansion, I wouldn't think that 25 would be out of order. But I think if it's a regular house, five or 10, and do some pictures, not only of the house, but of the street. Because what Google's gonna do is it's gonna map that up with their mapping software and, and they'll know the coordinates. You're on the corner of Maple and Elm. Now, what about, I know you've been hitting on this a lot here lately because that's working for Google, but what about pictures of you and your employees? What about them? Should you be posting them on Google so when people look and they can see who you are and you're not some bum coming to their house? I just did a video on that today. That's real, real important. Man, these days, people want to know who they're doing business with. They do not want to see if you're a pressure washer uh, uh, a wand with water coming out of it on a sidewalk, uh, especially a stock image of that. It's not, it's not you. In fact, uh, pressure washing, power washing is, is, is an industry that's ripe for lead generation sites, meaning that I don't own one of those companies, but I could create a website and I could sell the leads to Jason. Right or any of his friends, whoever wants to buy the leads. Right. So you have to do everything possible to show that it's a real business. If you have a truck, if you have a storefront that has a, a, a awning, if you have a letterhead business cards, all that should be uploaded to the GMB. Because if you get a manual review, that's what they're going to look for. If they see a bunch of stock images, you're going to get suspended. But if they, if you have your truck in the GMB, your truck on the on, on your website, if you have uh, business cards, letterhead, uh, uh, anything that shows that you're a uh, uh, people wearing shirts like this, nice pink. I got so fat, Jason. I got so fat. Look at my face, man. I used to be so good looking. You gained some weight. I've noticed that. that I did. I'm a big fat so now. <laughs> so he had knee surgery a couple of weeks. Like a couple yeah, of days yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm which... sitting home eating ice cream all the time. <laughs> so, so uh, what, what was I going to say? So, so yeah, you have to uh, you have to show Google that you're a real business. Yeah. You have to show Google you're a real business. What about yeah. if you uh, if Google <laughs> 
if you don't answer your phone that much from in Google, and then someone goes back and does it again, is that going to hurt you? I would think so, but I don't. I don't know that. But I'm just saying, out of like common sense, I would right. say that that would hurt you. So, so actually, um, so proximity definitely has an issue with, or it's definitely going to make you show up or not show up in Google Maps. Next thing, what are I guess what what are the top two two to three things you think are the things that will drive traffic to Google to make them want to show you in the top three pack? What are the, oh what are, we what know are the top is one? Okay, our reviews. Reviews. Reviews are killer. Reviews are reviews are killer. Like like anybody watching this who has less than like fifty reviews. You better get it together. Get your reviews together. You got to get a review. I don't care. Go to Starbucks or, or or Dunkin' Donuts and go get five dollar cards. And when you finish your job, ask Miss Smith to give her a review. And even though she doesn't know how to do it, have the link ready. You could get it in the back of your Google My Business, and just keep that link on your phone, and then just text it to her. Yep. And and she has to do a couple of things. She has to say. Now you can't optimize all your all your um, reviews, but your optimal review should say Jason from Jason's Power Washing of Burlington. Uh, I called Jason of Jason's Power Washing of Burlington in Burlington because I needed my sidewalk and my roof power washed. He was friendly, courteous, on time. You know they should use all those keywords that you see in the review. Right. Yeah, I hope I'm not talking too fast and I hope I'm not talking over people's heads because I hate when you know I hate when I go on a podcast and I don't understand a word the person the person says I hope I'm not that guy no you're doing fine so let's let's talk about reviews because reviews I, I'm, I'm I'm a big advocate I'm always pushing reviews you know I always tell people we push the reviews from the far, very first phone call we get right we're, we're asking yeah. for that review from the very first beginning you know i always say when you first get in there you know hey we're a small business and we're just you know our goal is to make sure you're so happy you want to give me a five-star review when you get there hey i'm i'm my goal is to make sure you're so happy you want to give me a five-star review when we're done i always you know good thing is is you know is there any reason why you wouldn't give me a five-star review right no? well right. here right or you know you can have um what i do with my card here i have a, a beautiful card here that um has this qr code on it and everything so that right way, hey you can give me a five-star review right you can give it on google and you can give me one on facebook right and so sure. we make it simple so they can just scan it and make it happen okay so here's here's the good thing with that it that's great i'll give you another thing without trying to make it too complicated so if i type in power washing cincinnati and I scroll down to your listing. I'm going to do two examples. I scroll down to your listing. I click your GMB. Then I click reviews. The URL in the top is going to show all the keywords that I searched. It's going to say Cincinnati. It's going to say power washer, pressure washer for decks or, or roofs. It's, and, 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 and it's going to have your name in it because I clicked it. So when I go write the review, that review link is going to have all those keywords in it, whereas your uh, uh, code there is just going to be the one in the back of Google. Right. So, so it would be great if people knew how to how to use the full string. So I'll I'll take it a ninja thing and I'll do it I'll do I'll do something different. So this may even help people. So. I'll do a search for Cincinnati power washes. I'll click, I'll click Brett's power wash. Then I'll back out of it and go to Jason's. <laughs> and it'll show Google that I, or I originally searched, but I didn't like that one. And I went to you and I wrote you a review. Gotcha. Now, could I use that QR code that would put all that Cincinnati in there? Sure could. And yeah. Use it as a bitly or use this here to make you that can happen. you can the problem is jason is you can't give that to 25 people because it's going to look it's going to look kooky right you know so what i would do is i would have several links like i have my own phone number in my cell phone or, or notes or something however you want to keep it 
and just put a couple of different links, strings in your in your in, on your phone, and then say, okay, Miss Smith, here's this one. Miss Jones, here's this one. You can't keep you can't give everybody the same one. Right. So yeah. George, George put George Joe's put this is gold. Been waiting for hey. Mansall to be a guest. So <laughs> wow, thanks. Hey, thanks, George. Hey, and if you don't know who Brett is, he is from Mindsaw. He does have a YouTube channel. He puts tons and tons of good information out there. I mean, you can learn. You. I learn a lot from Brett. I do have his you. um, his YouTube channel linked in the channel down here. So if you need to, you can find Thank it. You. Um, but you can go look up Mindsaw. And uh, he has all kinds of information on Google My Business, um, everything. He goes all the time on this. So. Thank you, thank you. Now I want to give you guys another another tip. I really want to I want to give you everything that I would put in a course, right? So you could ask me anything. I really want to help you guys. So another thing that I would do, guys, another thing that I would do, you, you know, it takes a while and it takes some ninja skill to get found in the Google Three Pack. I mean, it's not something where you just wake up and now it's crunch time. It's getting to Thanksgiving. People want to put up their Christmas lights and do all those other things. But let's face it, on your side, you don't have the money yet because you didn't get the jobs yet, right? For for some people, I'm making a, a you know a worst case scenario. Watch a couple of videos on how to do Bing pay per click, Bing pay per click. Because let me explain something. Once again, we'll use old Mr. Smith. He buys a laptop computer. He doesn't know how to change the default search engine to Bing. And he doesn't care, Bing, Google, he just needs to do a search. And he does searches and he needs a, a Christmas light installer and he's just going to go on Bing. The thing is, is that the Bing pay-per-click is about 85% cheaper than Google. You'll get a lot less traffic, but you also have to, $100 will go really far in Bing. Nice. So yeah, does Bing yeah, work yeah. well then? Yeah, Bing works good. It works better in some industries, like in the law industry, for some reason. For lawyers, it works really good. Uh, I, I should have been prepared. I don't know exactly how, but listen, now's crunch time. You guys got to get your Christmas lights. You got to do your thing. And, and I don't know if anybody's swimming in money right now. So I would do a couple of ads and thing. And, and, and anybody that's intimid intimidated by it, just go on Google, I mean, on, on, on YouTube, and just type in how to do a, a – uh, a, a Bing pay per click ad. How to do a Bing pay per? And there's people that take you step by step. Just take a hundred dollars. Now let's go over some people's heads and talk about citations. Because do citations still work, or is that a thing of yeah. the past? No, no. Well, so years ago, citations were the main ranking factor. Meaning that when I learned about citations in 2011. I switched locations from a physical store to a virtual store. And when I learned about Google Maps, I realized that all my, all my, um, uh, all my listings, my name, address, and phone number that were on all these websites like Yelp and Angie's List and all these websites, Thumbtack, they were all my old address. As soon as I changed my new address and put it on my Google My Business, and put it on my website, I ranked in the three pack. Well, at the time it was a seven pack. It was 10, 10, 10 11 years ago, it was, a, it was a seven pack. Yes. Right? Yep. So uh, citations helped me. Now, today you can change all your citations, but depending on the market, if, there's, if it's highly competitive, it's not gonna matter too much. But if you don't have citations, I think it's gonna be really hard. I know somebody who ranks without without messing with citations too much. But every time Google comes up with an update, they, they lose their rankings. Gotcha. You know, you know, so so I would say to get at least 100, 150 citations. But here's the thing. Let me give you a little trick on citations. So citations are your name, address, and phone number. All that is is your name, address, and phone number on another website. Everybody here has heard of Yelp. So if you have a Yelp page and you have your name, address, and phone number on Yelp, and you have it on your website, and you have it on your Google My Business, Google 
scours the web and goes, okay, 1010 Main Street must be their address, right? Mm-hmm. That, that must be their address. You want to also um, uh, go on to, um, go on to, if you don't know how to do a, U- a YouTube video, for example, go on to Fiverr and have them do a couple, like five videos for you. And in the description, put your name, address, and phone number, your NAT, because YouTube is owned by Google. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. So that, that, that's something else. Here's, the, here's what I wanted to say. So years ago, I bought a bunch of citations. I bought 300 citations, right, for a client. And my friend who passed away, Darren Marion, God, God rest his soul, passed away. He goes, Brett, are they indexed? I said, I don't know. What's the difference, man? He's like, he's like, yeah, but I, does Google with with the with index mean is does Google, can Google see those those uh, citations. citations? You built the citations. Can they see the pages? So eventually, I was like, let's check it. I bought three hundred citations like six months prior, and none of them were indexed. <laughs> so you have to make sure that they're indexed. How do you make sure that they're indexed? I'm going to give you a couple of ways. So indexed means that Google could see the citations. So if you if you go to Google and you type in site semicolon yelp.com slash whatever your extension is, mine saw, Jason's power washer, whatever it is, it'll show the page. If it says that the page can't be found or search console, it gives a little message and has nothing to do with Yelp, that means that it's not indexed. I don't want to go into it too far. If you if, just write that down, if you don't understand what indexed or non-indexed site is, just go on YouTube and and, and somebody's going to explain it real good. So, what I've been doing lately is I've been getting all my citations right, and on the bottom of the footer of our websites, we put "Find us on the web," and when you click that link, it's the whole page, nothing fancy, of all the citations. What that does is it gets the cite it gets those citations indexed uh, because my page is already indexed. Nice, right? Another thing that I'll do is I'll take uh, I'll take that link, the find us on the web link. So mindsort.com slash find us on the web, and I don't know if I have it on my website. I uh, that's another story. I'm not looking for. It. I'm just giving you an example. Um, I'll take that link and I'll put it in a YouTube video because why? Google owns YouTube. So inside the description, I'll say, and also find us on the web. So I'll do that for all my clients. Another thing you could do is you could just go on Fiverr, just go on Fiverr and, 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 and buy a Google News site. Google News, buy a gig. And what they'll do is they'll write an article about your company and, and, and add that link on your website. Find us on the web with all your citations. So, you want to make sure that those citations are indexed because if they're not indexed, they're not going to do you any good. You're not reasons. going to get the power of Google saying, uh, this is definitely your address, Jason's Power Washing, 1010 Main Street, if they can't see the citations on 300 websites. Nice. Does that make sense? Makes 100% sense. Okay. All right. So Nathan's like got I said, a, I don't want to talk over anybody's head. Nathan's got a good question here. I'm ranked number two in Lexington for lights near me, but don't show up for all of Christmas lights, Lexington, or holiday lights. Okay. So that probably means you don't have enough content on your website for those two keywords. How- so what I would do is I would write separate pages about those two keywords. And um, and then see what happens. And if that doesn't work, create article pages like blog pages that link. If you want to know more about Christmas lights, click here, and it goes to that page. Right. So that strengthens up that strengthens up that page. It makes it stronger. And the other thing, get reviews with those keywords. Those two keywords, Christmas lights, and what did he say? Something else. Holiday lights. Holiday lights. He, he needs. Oh, between now and Thanksgiving, he needs five reviews that have those keywords in it. Nice. Oh, another thing. Do Google posts with those keywords. GMB posts 
write posts about those Christmas lights. For example, we're going to use that as a, so write a post about about Christmas lights. You know, the uh, write about what it does to the uh, uh, the holiday spirit, how it makes people feel. Show a nice picture of Christmas lights, and then write a nice article about it, and then link to your Christmas light page. Now, how another many posts thing. do we need to do? About ah, another thing. In <laughs> another thing. There's, there's a thing. There's a thing called uh, products on Google My Business. There's a link that says products. It's not only products. It's products and services. But people just say, "Well, I don't sell anything," so they leave it empty. Go fill in that you do products, that you do Christmas lights. Fill out like ten of them. I do yellow Christmas lights. I do Christmas lights. I do Hanukkah lights. I do lights around the house. I, you know, whatever keywords you're trying to rank for, put it in your products. I told you, I'm giving you everything, Jason. I know, but you know, it's kind of what you're saying is, is we're trying to give Google everything we were giving them, so they know everything about us. If we only have no products, we don't, we didn't fill out our subscription and put Christmas lights in there. Google don't know what we do at that point. Just because you do it doesn't mean that Google knows that you do it. You have to fill out everything on the GMB. You have to make sure that it's on your website, and then you need, you need off-page signals. You need off-page signals to show Google that that's what you do. So you may need you know, a couple of backlinks that say that you do Christmas lights in Burlington. And Nathan said he has services, but this is actually products, because services is different than products. Right. And you want both. You want both of them filled out. Right. And you want to talk about those products. You want to put pictures of Christmas lights in those products. You want to talk That's right. and link it to your yeah, Christmas rock it light out, page. Man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here's another thing, guys. Don't anybody, don't anybody, don't anybody, I swear, don't anybody do this right now. This is probably the most important thing I'm going to say right now. Do not change the title of your Google My Business. So, for example, Jason's Google my business name may be Jason's Power Washing. And Jason will talk to me or watch one of my videos and he'll go, wow, I could do Jason's Power Washing of Burlington so I could rank there. And that will help you rank. That'll help you rank. Here's the problem. There's something called the CID number, CID. Think of it like a social security number for your Google my business name. You were given a CID number for Jason's power washing. When you change it to of Burlington, there's a glitch right now. As of November 8th, you're going to lose all your reviews. Oh, you're yeah. going to lose the 150 reviews. <laughs> and then you call Google and they're like, we don't keep track of your old CID number. <laughs> so so that's there's why a these people are losing their reviews? That's why they were losing their reviews, yes, because after November 8th, they've changed, you know, they fool around with their GMB. They're like, ah, I want to add Christmas lights to the GMB. Now's a good time to do that. And then they get a different CID number, and they lost all their reviews. Well, the one thing I've been preaching really hard here lately is do not change your name. Do not change your phone number. Do not change right. any of that stuff as yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. I have yeah, a don't do it now, especially eight, now. 800 reviews change his name. And it took him almost three months. He probably lost a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars because he did. He lost his Google My Business that had seven, eight hundred reviews on it. Man, so you know, and that's the reason why you want to work. And and and, and listen, this I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys something. I'm a I'm an SEO. I own own an SEO firm, but there's a lot of good ones besides me. You could check out Chris Palmer. You could check out a GMB Ranking Genius, GMB Ranking Genius. That's a girl I used to see. Her name is Jasmine. We worked together for three years. She's fabulous. Uh, you could check out Ruan Marino. You could check out William Jones. Write these names down. Like, watch these videos, you know. And then myself, of course. But these are reputable people that you're not going to get suspended. They know not to touch these things. Yeah. And so I don't, I don't have any problem with people from India, right? But I'm just saying, if they screw, you know, if they they go change something, what are you going to do? Right. It's good until it's not good. So that's that is definitely something that I see a lot of people ask me, and that's why I don't promote a lot of people. 
But, you know, what? how can you tell a difference between a good SEO company and a bad SEO company? If they're charging $300 a month, are they probably good or bad at that point? That is a great, that is the best question because it's the thing I'm most passionate about, right? Anybody that sells you on the first, all right. So, Jason, you come to me, we'll role play for a couple of seconds when it's appropriate, right? So, Jason, you're married, correct? Yep. When, when, when you met your wife, where, where did you meet her? If, if I don't mind asking, if you don't just make something up, I don't care. The park. You met her at the park. What did you say? Where did I marry her at? No, where did you meet her? Oh, I met her. I met her online. You know. Good. You met her then. online. Had you? Yeah. There's no, no, no shame. Listen, if you had met her online and you had said to her, her name, uh, Sally, Sally, uh, would you sleep with me? The next thing that would have happened was you would have got disconnected. That, that's called Tinder. Right? Tinder. Okay, right. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. You would, she would have Tindered you or something. I don't know. All right. So anybody that sells you on, it's not the price. Take the price out of it for a moment. Anybody that will sell you on the first date, do not deal with. Because I was that guy. I was so desperate to make, to make uh, sales when I had my office. I had my physical office. I used to come to Jason's Power Wash and with it, with it, no matter what you said, I already had the agreement filled out. All you needed to do was sign it. I already had the price there and it was a low price. I, I needed to sign, I needed that 15 or that $1,200, right? So anybody that signs you on the first thing, this, is a, this isn't a one-time buy, guys. This isn't something where you just, you know, um, this isn't something where you're just buying one time, like, a, a, I don't know, a, a fishing rod and reel. You'll never see the person again. You go, uh, you know, you go buy it and that's it. This is a relationship you're having. And if the person doesn't fully understand you and you don't fully understand them and they don't understand the, ex you don't understand the expectations and they haven't gone over with that, it's the wrong person. Now, let me explain something. When somebody signs up with us, I can only give you my process. I don't know whether it's right or wrong. What, I, I mean, I know it's right, but I, I don't want to, you know, you, you judge for yourself. Jason calls me up the first day and he's like, hey, man, I saw you on Jason's show. I'm interested in your business. No matter what I'm doing, you're only getting five or 10 minutes from me. And I need to know at the end of that meeting how much your gross is. Like, how much do you bring in a month? If you're a brand new business, I, unfortunately, if you're brand new, I, there's not much that I could work with, right? If you don't have any runway, if you don't have any capital, if you don't have any money, it's really hard. I'll give you some suggestions as to what you could do. I'm a nice guy, but I'm looking to work with people who have some runway, who have some money. I, I hope that doesn't come off the wrong way. So no, it's right. It, it's it's the same thing I teach. Not everybody's your customer, right? You not everybody's your customer. But I got, but I can't waste my time by everybody who wants to develop the next Facebook and wants me to be a fifty percent partner. Uh, uh, all I have to do is do the work, and when it's finished in five years, they'll give me half the profit. I can't waste my time listening to somebody like that, right? So mm -hmm. the first meeting's five or ten minutes. I see. I see if I can qualify. If you're cursing, if you're talking to me, if you're saying the f word every second word. Right away, you're out. Right away, you're out. I don't work with animals. I've been doing this for 25 years. I have enough people. I don't have to work with people. If you keep cursing like every second word, you're out. But let's just say the first meeting, you're good, right? And we get along and, okay, hey, Jason, can we meet on Wednesday? Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Now I do what's called a discovery meeting. And the discovery meeting, I ask you a bunch of questions to find out who your competition is, what your keywords, do you currently have a website, all the good stuff. And then I say, Jason, can I meet you again on Friday for just a couple of minutes? And that meeting is usually about a half hour. And that's called a solutions meeting. Basically, we spoke on the phone for five or 10 minutes. Then we did a discovery meeting for about 40 minutes where I really got to understand your business and got to joke around with you a little bit, got to know your personality, asked you a couple of questions to see how you'd react because I don't want to work with hotheads. And then you passed my test because they're interviewing me, but I'm interviewing them as well. And then I do what's called a solutions meeting. It's my third meeting. And in my solutions meeting, I say, Jason, is this everything you wanted? Is Brett's power wash the one that we're trying to beat here? 
These are his keywords. Are they appropriate for you? Are you doing this advertising? No, okay, everything's good. Now I say, okay, Jason, we're going to have a, 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 an agreement meeting uh, uh, tomorrow. We're going to have an agreement meeting tomorrow. And, and what you're going to do is, is, is you're going to uh, pay for the five-day guarantee. What they're going to do is they're going to pay for our process. I charge $2,500 a month. But they're going to give me $1,000, and my project manager is going to show them how we're going to work. We're going to get their Google My Business. We're going to be manager of their Google My Business. We're going to show them the pictures that they need. And day two, we're going to show them the keywords, the possibility of breaking in, how long it's going to take. We're going to manage all their expectations. We're going to do five 15-minute meetings. We're just going to pick one subject, all the sore spots. And then if they like our, our process, they pay the extra uh, $1,500. And then they'll be billed $2,500 a month. If at the end of the five days, they're like, you know what, you guys are full of crap. I don't. I just send them back $1,000. Listen, it was nice meeting you. Right. Right? I send yep. them back their $1,000. So it's not like I charge $6,500 now for a website and $500 a month. I charge $2,500 a month. I do your website. I do your citations. I do your driving directions. I, I get your reviews. I do all your reviews. I mean, I do everything. Now, I do have a, a what do you call that? A stopgap? I have something like a, a fall state, meaning people that have been in business a little while but don't have that type of money. They're not going to get that type of package, meaning that they're gonna, not going to get like 5, 10, 15 keywords. They're going to get one keyword and one GMB category. But if your thing is Christmas lights or power washing, we'll get you ranked for that keyword. Now, and it's much what, less. What, what, now, I know some, I know, I'm all about the snake oil because I got burnt when I first started. And that's how I learned all about SEO. And that's the reason why I don't push too many. Because, you know, in, the, in this industry, there's, you get into Facebook groups or you get wherever and you should use this person, right? And because yeah. they're amazing and, and, you know, we know what snake oil is. So what if, if someone promised you that they're going to get you on the first page within a couple of weeks, that's some red flags to, to get gone. Now what they can promise you is, is a lot of times is they'll promise you they can get you on the first page. And what they really mean is, is if you're, if you're Billy Bob pressure washing, well, yeah, I can get you on the first page because that's a simple, nobody else is Billy Bob's pressure washing out there. Right. So these are some things that we have to be concerned with and watch when we're dealing with this. Correct? Let me add in on that. Let me add in on that. So for example, if you're a pressure washer in Manhattan, I cannot guarantee you'll, and you're just straight out of the gate, brand new. We're just buying your domain name. That's where we go over the expectation in that five-day guarantee. Like, we're going to look at the rankings together. There's 200 people. You're not even on the 200s. Is it possible for you to be here in three days? Like, is that is that reasonable to you? No. And most reasonable people will say, of course not. But if they say yes, I send them back to, I send them back to $1,000. Meeting's over. Right. Right. So you have to be reasonable. Well, is it reasonable in 30 days? Well, no, but we should probably be. How about 60 days? Well, 60 days, we should start probably be on the first page by now. Right. Right. We should be in the top 20. Let's face it. People been for 20 years trying to get in this three pack. You're just popping in up on the scene. But right. Google's going to say, OK, Billy Bob, you got to You got to. We've been waiting for you. Let's let's get you ranked. <laughs> You're right <laughs> but, up first. But, but, right. We got to get you first. You're number one. But here's the thing, guys. Do not. Do not, do not ever, ever work with an SEO that will sign you up the first day. You're going to get prices from $300 to $3,000 a month. If they sign you on the first day, they did not know anything about you. And, and Jason didn't marry his wife after just meeting her the first date. He went through a process, right? A mm. trust process, right? She didn't trust you. She probably had to meet you in public before you look like a scary guy, right? So. So you probably had to meet in public somewhere, right? Then you had to meet a parent. Then you had to do this. Then you had to, you had to jump through hoops, right? Well, it's the same thing here because it's a relationship. It's not a one-time business. It's not a one-time transaction. So anybody that wants to sell you the first time, just say thank you very much and, and, and move on to somebody else. The person really has to understand your needs. 
and they have to be able to manage your expectations. And your SEO firm has to know has to know your sense of urgency. Like this is Christmas season. We're putting Christmas lights on. What can we do right now? Right. What can we do now? I, as a, I'm Billy Bob. I'm brand new. I'm just getting going. I'll I'll send you right over to I'll send you right over to Bing. I'll send you right over to Bing. That's the first thing I'll do. Then we'll then maybe we'll do a YouTube ad, a Facebook ad, and stuff like that. But we got to bring money coming in. See, my thing is, somebody's paying twenty five hundred dollars a month with me. The first seven days, they got to make a sale. Gotcha. They got to make a sale. I'll yeah. break all my rules. I'll spend three thousand dollars. Right. But I got to get them to make a sale. See, my customers like do like patio decks. They're lawyers. One one client for them is ten thousand dollars correct well that's even like christmas lights right christmas lights you're 1500 to 2500 is the average ticket so you got some tickets that are five ten thousand dollars for christmas lights yeah wow oh, i didn't know it was that much oh yeah christmas lights is super profitable my so, god yeah. is that with the lights included we include yeah there are lights, but there are oh, so lights. everything they're my lights so do they rent them or do they It's buy basically them? like a rent, yes. So they just rent them for the season. If they don't want them next year, you can put them on somebody else's house. But the beautiful thing of it is it's about, so the close rate sucks. The close rate's only about 10 to 20%, but the return rate's about 80%. So, so there's a problem there. If the close rate, I mean, if the, if the close rate is only 10 or 20%, uh, there's something in the sales process that's not right. It's not everybody's customer. A lot of people call and they think that Christmas yeah, lights are five hundred dollars, and it's kind of like yeah. doing good SEO with for five hundred dollars. It just isn't happening. right, right. But I wonder if there's anything in in the process that I spoke about with my process that you could maybe add on to your process that you may help. Probably, so Christmas lights is a very emotional buy right? It's very emotional buy. So it isn't a long-term relationship as in, if, and it's mostly female. So if they call today, you better get them a quote today and get it sold today because it's very emotional when they buy. Right. Okay. So. Uh, okay. Do you guys have something like a uh, uh, pay now, uh, buy now, pay later? Uh, some people do, not too many. Okay. That may be a good thing. You know, Stripe, Right. If all your clients, if all, all your friends here sign up with Stripe, they have a they have something where you could buy now and pay later. So somebody who wants to buy something for five thousand uh, dollars, they could buy it and then pay it over time. Gotcha, gotcha. Most that may help put, your close rate. Most people just put it on their credit card anyway, so and then pay. Later. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Okay. So I have some really good old people. Jason really is an internet genius. No, I just know who to follow and find out information <laughs> and pass it on. Um, yeah, yeah. Jason's real good. Why are reviews not showing up? So reviews like on Yelp will almost, on Yelp, will almost never show up, right? That's the first thing. But I assume you're talking about Google reviews. Yes, Google reviews. Yeah, uh, as of November 8th, November 8th, uh, and this may, your reviews may have not shown up prior to the 8th, but there's a major glitch going on as of the 8th. And a lot of reviews are not showing up after November 8th, and they're working on it. Now, I have a form that you could fill out. I could send it to Jason, and then maybe, Jason, you could pass it to your group? Yeah. Okay, I have a form that you could get in touch with Google, but only send them one message. Don't send them five, ten messages. They'll 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 spam. They'll put you in the spam thing. Gotcha. Um, yeah, mine saw is legit. I've watched some of your videos and love your content. Yeah. Thanks, so. man. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate. I appreciate you. I appreciate you having me on. And you know, uh, I, I'm a I'm a fellow that does things in routine. And uh, I go to sleep at eight o'clock at night. And I had anxiety all day about this because what was I going to do from dinner time? till nine o'clock, like, like I was literally sweating. Uh, but you, but you guys made this real easy. You know, it was really nice. I'm really glad that I, I'm really glad that I did it. And I'm really glad that I did it because I feel like I was able to help a lot of people and clear the air. Even if you didn't understand everything, you, you understood a couple of things. There was a change November 8th. That's why your reviews aren't showing up. If you call an SEO, uh, uh, don't anybody that gives you a price the first day, don't take it. 
and look into Bing ads, especially now where you've got to get business right away and you don't have a lot of money, go on Bing because you may be able to get cheap uh, pay-per-click there. Yep. So there's a couple of things that you learned even if you didn't understand stuff. George put, I'll watch this video over and over to get the max out of this golden information. Also, like I said, this is Brett from Mind Salt. He's got, I've, I've actually linked his YouTube channel down below. So if you need to, you can find it there. You can type in Mind Salt and he'll come up. Um, and so definitely go check him out um, and do that. So one thing that I always like to ask guests as a question is, is, I'm, you know, and I don't, I'm sure you do because you're a business owner and you're an entrepreneur, but what is one book that you have read that has helped you out or one that you've read lately that kind of set your mind to whatever? So the book that probably changed my, 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 my thought on, on everything is uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Yep. Good book. Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. I'm just going to give you a short story about that. I know we only have four minutes, but I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to wrap it up in two minutes. In fact, I may even sing two minutes and then and then say the story the last two minutes. No, I'll say I'll say the story right now. Real quick, this guy had a, had an oil oil mine in the early 1900s. He was he was he was digging for oil. He was drilling for oil, drilling, drilling, drilling. After a year, he's like, look, man, I can't I can't. I can't hit any oil. There's no oil here. He sold to this guy for $5,000. The guy moved it six inches, and he hit oil, right? That was the biggest takeaway from that book. It's like sometimes you're only six inches away. You worked all that all that time, man. You put in all that pain. Get the reward for your pain. Don't just get the pain and walk away because then you got to start all over. If you decide to start the thing all over, you got to start from the beginning. Like sometimes you're only six inches away from 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 the solution. Don't quit. I agree a hundred percent. And what do you always say at the end of your podcast or your videos? What I always say is, look, business is business, and you got to do your business. But the thing that's real important is you make sure you're good to your wife and you're good to your kids, man. I, I I'm I'm in the process of getting a divorce. I was a hard head, man. I was a hard head. I, I was, I was, I was, uh, when I say that at the end, I'm speaking to myself. I was a hard head and I was nasty and I was always angry. And uh, all I cared about was business because I got a deep passion to make it, man. I woke, when I was a kid, I always thought I was going to be the president of the United States or I was going to be something where like people would have to bow to me or something like that. I don't know where I got that from, but I always had that mentality that I would be on the top of a mountain. And everybody else would be coming up trying to trying to say something to me. And I brought that mentality to my house. I brought that mentality to the house. So I always have to rem remind myself. I always have to remind myself that that was the thing that was important. The thing that's important is be good to your wife and kids, especially while you're struggling, especially when Miss Smith wants a five thousand dollars back after you put up all the Christmas lights. And now she wants her money back. And don't come back into your house and take it out on your family. Don't be nasty to your family. Be good to your family. In fact, that's the time when you should take them all out for pizza. Yep, I agree 100 percent on that. I'm all about the family, right? You can work 90 that's hours. That's why we do it. You can work 90 hours a week, and it's not going to get you anywhere at the end of the day. Look, I work 90 hours a week. I'm living like Rocky One. It's just me and my dog. <laughs> Remember the first Rocky where he's walking around with Bupkis? It's yeah. just me and my dog. I mean, I live in a nice place. Don't get me wrong. But it's just me and my dog. Yeah. That's what happens when you're nasty. Yeah. That's what happens when you're nasty. Awesome. Well, thank you, Brett, for coming on. I know everybody appreciated that. Somebody said that gave me chills. Um, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, so thank you for coming on. I appreciate well, it. My and uh, we'll talk at you later, but hang on. I'll talk All right. Thank you a lot. Thank you, guys.